Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You can take your seats. Good morning, Chinoy. Mamkasei Chinoy. Livugenjani Chinoy. Habari sana Chinoy. Thank you. As introduced before, my name is Leslie Marange. Uh, I'm no longer 33, I'm 34 now. <laughs> Let me tell you how important you guys are to me. I arrived this morning as early as 2 a.m. from Blawayo. So before I proceed, let me acknowledge uh, the prophet and Amai. I also want to acknowledge the leadership and all protocols observed. Growing up as a young man, I always wanted to make Africa great. And the greatness of Africa is a mandate that you and I have. That mandate, we cannot borrow it to anyone, neither can we transfer it to anyone. It is our mandate and we have to take responsibility of it. I grew up in a prison camp. My father was a prison officer and my mother was a teacher. I do not regret how I grew up because my background has helped me to have the spine that I have today. I know a lot of you come from a similar environment like mine. Your environment does not determine who you become. Uh, how you grew up does not determine the end game. What is important is to dream and to dream hard. After dreaming, you then have to work on your dream. As young as in grade six, I identified a very unique talent within me, a talent to cook very well. <laughs> Embarrassing as it was in the community, I took it to heart and I pursued it. Let me tell you, in 2005, when I was doing my ordinary level as head boy in Berengwa at Mnene High School, I was the first person to get an A in food and nutrition. And then, I was then requested to come back again and become head boy. But I told them my vision is not to be a head boy. My vision is to cook for the world. <laughs> so I went to another school, JZ Moyo, Jason Ziapapa Moyo in Matebeleland, where I also then did my food science, biology, and chemistry. After that, I then completed my A-level and went to Chinoy 
University for my undergrad in food science and technology. Passionate as I was, I told myself, if Kellogg's did it, if Nestle did it, I will do it. Yeah. The vision and the passion of transforming Africa it has been with me and I've been pursuing my dream for the last 20 years. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, friends and colleagues, uh, dreams come true. <laughs> it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but definitely when you exercise the discipline of hard work, dreams come true. No matter how the society view your dream, what is important is your belief in your dream. Some of you are dropping their passions so that they do what the society deem okay. Sometimes, is what you deem okay that matters. After completing my first degree, I then went and worked. I still remember at 25, I was already a process manager, producing 300 tons a day of sugar. They used to call me baby manager because I used to deliver. Whatever your hands toucheth, brethren, do it to the best of your capabilities. <laughs> I worked from 24 to 29. And in 2018, I then started Glide Time. Glide Time is an acronym. My mother's name is Gladys, and my young sister's name is Timely. So it's a combination of Gladys and Timely to make Glide Time. <laughs> Whatever you do, family comes first. <laughs> Don't be too big. Don't be too smart for your family. Family comes first. We might disagree as brothers, but we are brothers because God designed it that way. In 2018, I then also started my MBA in strategic management. Let me assure you, I'm a very strategic young man. Going forward, because I'm a dreamer and I'm a believer, I told myself, yes, I've done very well in the local scene, but I also need to explore what the world has. Now I'm doing a business transformation with Stanford University, the second best university in the world. <clears throat> Coming from a prison camp to Silicon Valley. <laughs> regardless of your circumstances, regardless of where you come from, what is important is to believe and to dream. <laughs> Success is not for the genius, neither is it for the top in class but it's for those who are willing to try and fail. If you try once and if you fail, keep on trying. Guzolu nga shall be well. Zichanaka, keep on trying. Now that I stand on holy grounds, allow me to refer to the Bible. 
to the book of 3 John, verse 2, which is an anchor verse in my life. It then says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you might prosper and be of good health as your soul prospereth. God's plan for man is to see men prosper. God's plan for man is to see men in good health. But God is also very smart. He then says, your prosperity should be directly related to your spiritual growth. Why? Because he knows if money gets in the hands of a fool, then the world is in trouble. That's why God is so particular about prosperity which is guided by the word of God. Brethren, if you are sick today, it's not God's plan. If you are poor today, it's not God's plan. If you are not enriching your spirituality, is not God's plan. I'm happy young people you are gathered today to enrich God's plan by praying him at the prayer mountain. Well done. There is only one functional formula to success that I used. Success is equal to those who are writing a divine intervention plus hard work. No matter how hard you work, when there is no divine guidance, there is no success. No matter how hard you pray, when there is no hard work, there is no success. That's why even when God wanted the walls of Jericho to be down, he said, go and walk around them seven times. Man has to do what man has to do. And we leave the rest to God. When we started this business, when I left my job, let me share you my salary. As far as I recall, I was earning more than 7,400 US dollars, not uh, any other currency that you might think of. But I decided to leave that so that I pursue my dream. Sometimes you can be trapped in Laban's house. Sometimes you might be trapped in Laban's house. I'm the chief engineer. I'm the manager of whose company? Who are you working for? Are you going to transfer that post to your children? Are you going to make that inheritance to your family? You also need a glide time for your family. You are working so hard, I can spend the entire night working, but I would know very well that I'm aiding to the establishment of my business. I'm challenging young people today, let's be masters of our own destiny. Yeah. Let's not lend our future to anyone. Let's control our destiny. When we started, we started in a small kitchen in 2018. That's how we started. It's good my wife was taking these pictures because she wanted to remind me. That's how we started. Production was happening on the veranda. That's how we started. We're just the three of us 
24 hours doing production. But I had left a 7,400 job. Crazy, is it? Even my mom cried. I bet she prayed for me. But I told her, Mama, don't worry. It shall be well. When I was doing that, my wife was pregnant. When I was doing that, my wife was pregnant. No income. Sometimes you need to take that extra leap of faith so that dreams can be achieved. Everyone in the family thought there's something wrong with this young man. Something, something wrong. And let me tell you, when I was at this stage, my CEO called me and he said, I want to make you an MD for another SBU and I'm going to double your salary to 15000 And I said, thank God, now I know my worth. I'm not coming back. Thank God, I now know my worth. I'm not coming. He, he sat with me and then said, but Leslie, you're a brilliant young man. And I said, if I'm that brilliant, let me go and determine my own destiny. If you know that I'm that sharp, let me go and determine my own destiny. Brothers, sisters, never lend your future to anyone. No matter how good it looks, focus on what matters. Fast forward. If you ask me about the turbulence of Zimbabwe, I'm very well positioned to tell you about it. My business faced all forms of difficulty and the biggest is inflation. The little saving that I had was wiped away. I still remember when I laid on the floor, I said, dear God, please God intervene. I had no salaries, I had no rentals, I had no raw materials, I was gone. And at that point, I decided, I thought, because I was just working across my former employer, should I just cross the road and tell him I need that job? But I say to myself, no, let me persevere. Let me try again. Let me try again. How many of you, you have tried once and failed and just left it? I will share with you biblical examples. Genesis chapter 26. Let me just summarize it. It was the year of famine. But in that year, God made Isaac prosper. In the year of famine, this year, our own president declared a famine. Somebody should prosper this year. If you go on verse 12, the Bible says God made Isaac's wealth become hundredfold in the year of famine. And Abimelech, the king of Gay, went to Isaac and said, please move away from us. Why? Because you are now too powerful for us. So let me tell you, brothers, it's not about where you are is about your relationship with God. Once that relationship with God is established, no matter how hard an economy is, God will see you through. They went and filled his well with mud because of jealous. What did he do? Isaac did not fight back. He moved away and went and dug another well. 
So when the first well is closed, go and dig another one. When they steal your formula, go and dig another one. When they steal your business, go and dig another one. When they act in bad faith, go and dig another one. The second one was also filled with mud. Isaac walked away from it. He went and dug the third one. Read the chapter. you see it. And they came again and they filled it with mud. Isaac did not fight. He went and dig the fourth one. But on the fourth one, they did not come because God had granted that well. So if you are running a chicken project and all the birds die, don't give up, buy another batch. Borrow and buy another batch. If something happens again, do it again until God grants you. As young people, giving up should never be become part of our vocabulary. We should never give up. We should keep trying. Those in the military intelligence, they will know. We don't stop going to war because of the terrain. We navigate through the terrain. Those who fly airplanes would know. We don't stop gladiating because of the turbulence. We go, we turbulate, and achieve whatever we need to achieve. So no matter how difficult the circumstances are, we need to soldier on, brethren. Why are we doing it? We are doing for this church. This church needs resources to function. We are doing it for the gospel. Because if we are a bunch of poor people, the gospel will not be advanced. If we allow the devil to incapacitate us, the gospel will not be advanced. All the PA system, whatever is happening here, there are resources required. For us to advance the mission of the gospel, we need resources. And resources don't come from poor people. So, the spirit of giving up should end today. We need to soldier on until we achieve it. It is within our mandate and it is within God's providence that we should do to the best of our capabilities. Young people, we need to take charge of our future. We need to take responsibility of our future. Because if we don't, no one will come and do it for us. And it's actually a betrayal to the kids that you are going to bring in this earth. I would want my kids to grow up the way I grew up. Never. It won't happen. It won't happen. But if you don't do anything... Anything about that dream or that idea, definitely it will happen. So the choice is yours. The decision is yours. Do you want to change the status quo or you want to keep things the way they are? Some people blame other people for their problems. Some people blame other people for their Isaac did not blame anyone. When the well was closed, he went to the other one. And when it was closed, he moved to the next one. And as you continue to move, God recognizes you. It is not for us to fight. I know many companies, they have been trying to do what I do. I don't fight anyone. Because my vision is bigger than those who want to follow. So I will continue innovating so that they can get things to copy from me. I'm an innovator. What they bring, we call them Me Too products. Me Too products. Neniwo. Lami. Me Too. Me Too. 
So we need to continue innovating and let the Me Too do that because there are Lazarus on the seat of a rich man. They are just getting the bread crumbs, not the entire share. My colleagues call me, did you see this company? I'll tell them, I'm not a commodity brand. I'm a health and wellness brand. My vision is to transform health and wellness through great nutritional choices. If they copy one or two things on my portfolio, it's okay. What can they do? What can they do? So I will not focus on competition. I will not focus on it. I will just soldier on with my dream. And leave the me too, do the me too. Because I'm above the me too. Why? Because God gave me the intellect to think ahead of my time. Not just me and you who are seated there. So we need to take charge, brethren, of our circumstances. We need to take charge. Going forward, I want to show you our product portfolio. Just to quickly run down our product portfolio. Uh, so that you guys can see. Now this we were doing uh, as we were starting. You see how we started doing things in the boot and we used to count things. Uh, it, it was, but one thing that you can see, the same packaging that I'm still using six years ago. What that I was using six years ago, I'm still using it today. What does this speak about excellence? When you do things, do things to the best of your capabilities. <laughs> do things to the best of your capabilities. You can quickly run, run down. Yeah, if you look at this, guys, nobody has to tell me that this is international standard. I know. I don't need affirmation from anyone. I know. So people ask me, how did you manage to export? We saw your product all over in Zambia. I said, because it's worth. So when you come up with something, do it to the best of your capabilities. I did that six years ago, and they are still trying to catch up. They are still trying to catch up. And then the name joke, I want to bring another one. Very soon. And I've got another Trump card that I've got in my pocket. <laughs> when, when you hit, hit hard. So that when they think about, they think twice. A colleague called me and said, such, such a big brand is struggling to deal with you in the export market. I told them, they will never deal with me. They will never deal with me because I'm on a forward trajectory. Forward trajectory. So as you do, as you do your business, people should not be, you know, feeling pity for you. You should do things that people should be obliged to support you. And let me tell you, when you do this, the support will come. So there are many ideas that we are sitting on that we now need to start implementing because this country and Africa needs that. We can't, we can't be a continent of beggars when we have got such brilliant young people around, such brilliant minds around. We can't continue to be beggars. No, the problem of Africa. What is the solution of Africa? We need solutions now. The problem of Africa is because there's too much corruption. The problem of Africa, there's too much. We need solution. The solution of Africa is it has 67% young people. It has got the freshest minds in this earth. That's the solution of Africa. The solution of Africa is we have got innovators. People who are determined to change the, the status quo. That is what we need to focus on. And let me tell you, 
if we don't come up with our own solutions to our own problems, nobody from anywhere will come up with those solutions. Last year, just last year, 26% of the deaths recorded in Zimbabwe were because of diet. Sugar diabetes, cancer, hypertension, and somebody has to do something about it. Somebody has to do something about it. And that's what we are doing. Whatever the business that you come up, it should have Im enough impact to change the status quo. Your business should be measurable. How many people got this from my offering? Those who haven't tried Glide Time, we have got a booth there. You can go there and enjoy yourself. You, you, you can see it's international standard. And I'm not apologetic about it. When I innovate, I innovate hard. You know, I, I went to Europe. Europe. You know, Europe. They told me, we never knew that you Africans are so this brilliant. So if we do things to an exceptional level, the world will start respecting us. Yeah. With what God, just look around what God did for us. We don't need donations, people. We are not beggars. We are masters of our own destiny. We are innovators. And we are God's children. So aid should not be sent to Africa. We should, we should not receive aid from anyone. We should actually, because of the vast vegetation, we should actually help the world get good stuff from us. We should start exporting. Value-added, not raw materials, value-added products because the technology we have the energy we have, the zeal we have. But now we are receiving tons and tons and tons. And those aid, let me tell you, somebody could have paid for it, it's not you. And somebody would have paid to deliver that, and it's not you. They are just giving each other. And you guys are just the recipients. So we need to stop receiving aid and start owning our own destiny. We need to own our own destiny. We need to show the world what Africa is all about. And that agitation should begin here today. Why? Because the theme is to ignite. The theme is to ignite. To ignite that innovation in you. That intellect in you. That desire for success in you. It's a well-calculated theme. Ignite. Ignite. Well-formulated. Let's ignite the desire to transform who we are. We post a lot of things on social media. This, 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 this. What are you doing to change the status quo? Let's see you post about what you have done to make things better. Let me talk about gratification. Gratification. If you see Prophet and Amai in a limousine, on a, in a Maybach. Don't try to copy that. Because Mariacho Awuna. Because you don't have that money. So the problem with young people is we want to impress the next person. You know, for the past four years, I was driving a Honda Fit 
And I was not concerned. Now I'm 33. For the record, I became a millionaire at 31. <laughs> Gratification. When you have a dream, you need to know how to allocate your resources. Because you go and buy a Maybach for one million with working capital. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? So a lot of young people around here are trying to look okay when they are not okay. We know that you are not okay. We know that you are not okay. Because when we greet you, the first thing that you say to us tells us, no, there's no sustainability here. There's no sustainability here. So stop impressing us because we are not impressed. What impresses us, what, what impresses us is what Econet did to employ people and take kids to school. What impresses us is what Nyarazo is doing to bury our relatives. Cross-generational businesses is what impresses us. Not the car that you are driving. Don't be pushed by the streets, young people. Let's not be pushed by the streets. Let's create cross-generational wealth. In silence. In silence. Let's create it. When people ask you success, success is measured by how many people you have transformed their life. That's true success. A lot of you are trying to, you know, Facebook, you know, this and that, Instagram. We'll be seeing you. And we'll be praying for you. <laughs> to say, God, deliver them from slaying. <laughs> God, deliver them from bingarism. Because this world does not need that. This world needs to elevate people from poverty. Go and check the statistics. 400 million Africans are, are struggling with undernutrition. And what are we doing about it? We can't even have clean water when we have innovators. People are dying. People are dying. When you are trying to be quitter number one in class in Madofo. To be the first in a class of failures. Quitter number one in class in Madofo. To be number one in a class of failures. Delayed gratification. Wait now, wait today, and see what happens tomorrow. When you go and buy a range or a Maybach, you should just do it as you are going to buy bread, eh? And come back, your wife says, what is this? Soon I bought it. I bought it. But you guys are saving for 20 years to buy a simple 120,000 vehicle. How sat to Ashika? Hold on. You're not on. there yet. You're not there yet. Hold on. Hold on. You don't save to buy a car when you have money. You just go and buy. You just go and buy. A lot of you, pillow, pillow man, pillow man, I want to show them. <laughs> we are not concerned, my friend. We are not concerned. And let me tell you, those who have been exposed to moneyed people, the discussion is about impact. So how many people are you employing? So how many people are you sending to school? Let me tell you, my own mentor, one of the big names, uh, Regisaru Chera, Grand Thornton. 
Before he accommodated me, he said, let me go and see the car that you are driving. He saw me in a Honda Fit. He said, we are. You are someone I can help. Come. And I was going there for him to help me structure a five million deal in a Honda Fit. And he said, now that I saw the car that you are driving, I know that you, have got, you are a young man of focus. So people with money, they know you. <laughs> they know. They know what success is all about. Just when I was at ZITF, I went in, Mr. Mataranyika was having a meeting. He stood up, he came and hugged me. They allow you to get in their space when they see discipline. <laughs> discipline. When they see discipline, I can tell you confidently, there is no door that I cannot go and access. You know why? Because I've got the right conduct. Right conduct. Some of you here, you post things, beginners and things like that on Facebook and, and all those things. The next time you want a meeting with the prophet, they will run through your profile and say, ah, this is a problem. This is a problem. So discipline can take you far. I was not top in my class. I was never top in my class. But I was head boy, O level, head boy, A level, student administrator. Now I'm the vice president at Stanford University. Discipline. <laughs> Discipline. Discipline can open all the doors for you. Discipline. I urge young people to be disciplined. Disciplined. Let me tell you about creative energy. Creative energy can be wasted by indiscipline. You are trying to juggle a lot of, you have got, for example, six, seven girlfriends, right? Six, seven. You are trying to tell this one this. You are also trying to tell this one this. You are also trying to tell, you are trying to manage... You are using your creative energy for useless things. Yeah. Useless. And let me tell you, creative energy has got a period. It has a shelf life. You go beyond 33, you start feeling tired. So. You start feeling tired. So. Because kids are now starting to go to school. Your wife is also being, you know, concerned about you very much. And the kind of young girls that you can interact with or not. You, you, you are just now getting tired. And that creative period is exhausted. So if you use your creative period for nonsensical things, it will catch up with you in older age. So, the difference between who is going to make it in future is today. What is it that you are building on? What is it that you are doing today? It's going to impact you 20, 30 years. Whatever you are doing today is going to show. Galatians 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reapeth. Whatever you sow today, is, you shall reap tomorrow. So, young people, let's not waste our creative energy. Bless her for what? For what? Double crossing for what? For what? So that creative energy which is being used for that Mjolo line 
instead of the business line, it will catch up with you. Simple, it will catch up with you. You jolo hard, you suffer hard. You, 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 you work hard today, you also get the results. Fellows, I've been doing this, nurturing this for the past 20 years. 20 years. As far as 15, trying to, you know, imagine how it is going to be like. And working towards it. So if you miss this creative energy, let me tell you, this my mentor told me. When you miss the creative energy, you will never catch up. In conclusion, let me show you what is happening now. Let me show you what's, what's happening now. I, I was in Germany doing technical designs for equipment. And they asked me, Leslie, you seem to be very smart. I said, no, I'm a process engineer, guys. I'm a process engineer. I can comprehend what you guys are doing. And let me tell you the difference between Europe and Africa. It's just one difference. Those guys, they have machines. We don't have machines. So whatever we do, we need to create means of production. Whatever we do, if we want to equalize what is happening in Europe and what is happening, we are not mechanized enough. And look, as I got there, I don't dress like them because I'm a Pan-Africanist. I'm an African. I dress like an African. I don't need to impress anyone. They were actually happy to say, oh, this is how you wear in Africa. Yes, this is how we wear. Because we are on the same level, discussing the same issues together as equals. And that's the equipment that we have brought in. You see? Celebrating who we are. Because we have made it. This is what making it means. Creating the means of production. That building is 80% done. By 30 May, I should be done building that building. So this is what it means, folks. Transformation. Changing lives. Creating jobs. It doesn't need you to go anywhere to do it. It needs that determination to do it. Regardless of where I come from, what matters is where I am now. So I've just shared with you what we call a functional formula. For me to get this investment, I fasted for 80 days. 80 days. In the morning, breaking at 6 in the evening, praying to God. God, please, take me through. Take me through. Where do you get the time to confide with God when you're trying to be relevant to people? Where, where do you get that time? This is what you need to do. On your knees. With your God. Divine intervention, hard work is equal to success. Never miss the formula. Now that you have chosen God, challenge him. He will show you what he can do for you. I'm not ending here. 
as I'm doing this, I bought land in special economic zone, Sunway City. As I'm completing this building, because of the, I've already bought another hectare in Zambia, in the special economic zone. Zambia, are you there? Yeah. Murishani. Yeah. We know, we know. Yeah. So just next to Trade Kings, I'm building another factory, Zambia. Botswana, are you here? In Salibi Pikwe, I bought four hectares of land in Botswana. In the next 10 to 15 years, Glide time should be found in at least 25 African countries. <laughs> you, you, know, you know why I know it's possible? Because God is on my side. Because God is on my side. When they say he is God of the mountains and God on the, of the valleys, they mean it, guys. Try him. Confide in his best. But you can't do it when you are jollering. It's not possible. You can't. You can't. You are giving our leaders a lot of pressure to cast the demons because you are doing kubawa muriko. The beer hole. You're in the church as well. Young people, we need to be true about this religion. God is not mocked. Never. Never mock God in your actions. People might not know. Your pastors might not see it. But he sees. Never. Galatians 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow with so shall you reap it. So this is the formula, folks. Pray hard. Work hard. And God will see you through. Africa needs you young people and we cannot let Africa down. We cannot. We can't afford it to let Africa down. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, uh, myself, I'm also into food production. And um, I also uh, made the mistake uh, of trying to work with other people. And I lost some of my formulas and stuff. It really crashed me at that point. But I continued and uh, started again. So I'm now working in two countries, trying to uh, do a lot of production and stuff. But my main question is that, what are the major mistakes, operations, production, and financial mistakes that we make uh, in, in the food production business? Why can you just uh, help me with it? Okay, thank you. There's only one answer to your question. Don't be too big for your system. Don't be too big for your system. As you are doing this, you have got the consumer at the end. So the consumer informs you what she or he wants. And your duty is to respond to customer needs. So the biggest mistake that see a lot of people also outside businesses, when people tell you, no, this thing is hard, you tell them, no, just eat. Why are you saying it's hard? Just eat. No, it's hard. Go and work on it. So that you provide what the market requires. So I think that's the best answer for you. To say food production is responding 
to the dynamic customer preferences. They are dynamic. Some here don't like this, some here don't like this. But what you are trying to do is to aggregate those likings and those dislikes so that you come up with something very good. So that's what we did. I know a lot of people who say, ah, healthy products are boring and they are not tasty. But try Glytime. You find the... Who, can I say those who have tried Glytime? They, they will tell you that Glytime has got very nice food. Why? Because we respond, we listen. So the biggest mistake that you can make as a food processor is to force people to eat what they don't want to eat. Simple. Thank you. Thank you, Amanta. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for the life-transforming information that you have been uh, sharing with us. I'm really impressed. Uh, so, just to take us a little bit behind, a few days ago we were being told that uh, there are a lot of problems within our nation, and from those problems we have to eradicate, we have to extract our solutions, which then can become our source of incomes. So uh, I want to ask that, let's say, for example, I have, got, uh, I have realized a problem, and that problem, I can solve it with uh, the things that I can do best. Uh, so I have a problem that I can solve, and having this uh, solution that I have, my question is now, uh, this solution involves uh, interacting with people, convincing people that my, my, my formula can work for them as much as uh, it can work for me also. So, like, I have... I want to ask this question because it's similar to yours. You saw that there was an opportunity for you to do something for yourself and leave work. So, uh, if I have uh, this solution, where now do I start? Who do I initially involve in this, uh, in this project of mine that I would have uh, liked to start? And are there any authorities that I have to inform? And last but not least, uh, how, do I conduct, uh, how do I conduct these people that I want to deal with? How do I, is there any way, a special way that I, that, that I have to communicate with them so that they don't reject my, my... Okay. The first problem is you think you need people to realize your dream. I started in a kitchen. Let me tell you, you need to work and get what we call proof of concept, right? Proof of concept to those who are engineers, here, scientists, is a prototype, right? A prototype. So before you even try to go and convince the next person, convince yourself. By coming up with something that is functional, whether if you are trying to bring a very big machine, try by prototyping it into a small thing. Before I invested in that, I was doing it in a kitchen. That's prototyping, right? And then when you prototype, you then scale. And there are different levels of scaling. Batch, and then continuous, and then automated. Huh? Operations management. So at the end of the day, the problem with us is we want to be on the continuous side before we even do the prototype. So at the end of the day, you want to be like Ivins and keep 100,000 broilers when you have not even kept 25. That's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. I took five good years trying to prototype just to make sure that there's proof of concept. This thing works. True, this thing works. So the problem is we want to go and convince and convince and con before you do that, convince yourself using the necessary resources that you have from family and friends. Come up with a prototype. Do it from the kitchen. And then after the kitchen, go eh, the next step. Because I will tell you, you guys, listen to me. Listen to me. When there is no prototype, 
You can't convince people. Africa is different from Europe, where you can pitch an idea and people believe. Here in Africa, we want to see if it is working before we give you money. I started exporting from two rooms, a factory of two rooms. I was already taking the product out. Those who know from Zambia, Umoyo, I was already giving Umoyo and Melissa small shops before I went into pick and pay. So before you convince the big, start with the small. Even as children, they don't start by running. They start by crawling. They walk, they fall, and then they run. But Tina, we, we just want to run. We just want to run. We just want to see that lack of patience is what is killing most of us. And that attitude should stop today. That should stop. Let's be patient. Let's develop things. Proof of concept. Very important. When I got my investment from Old Mucho, you know Old Mucho is the biggest financial investment, right? They went through a due diligence process to check huh? corporate governance. Legal. Are you not fighting with people in the courts? Commercial. Where is your product? Where is this sitting? Are, are you getting it? And let me tell you, I was 88%. I achieved 88% correctness. And then they said, work on the 12% on the other small issues. And these guys are so serious. To the extent that they actually realized my name on the certificate of incorporation had an extra E that is not supposed to be there. And my ID number he had a stroke waiting, which was not supposed to be there. So before you go and convince the big, make sure that you have done enough in your own space. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Uh, so I'd like to know that in the early stages of the product life cycle, first, isn't it you pre-launch the product, then you launch it? So I'd like to understand uh, that when you launched your product, how did you know that this, this was the rightful audience for my product? And how uh, were you able to get in touch with the customers uh, uh, how were you able, which criteria did you use to make them engage with your product? And in the long run, how are you able to retain loyal customers for your product? Thank you. Okay, thank you. So for me, as a product developer myself, right, one thing that I said I'm not going to do, brands are not built in one day. Uh, when we were doing our operation in the kitchen, we used to produce 24 units a day. 24. One, two, three, not packs, units of 350 grams. So pretty much that's about, uh, should be, those who do maths times 24, 8.4 8, 8 kgs a day. That was our production. My first client was food lovers, Avondale, right? I went there and said, guys, I've come up with this product. And remember, product development is a function of desktop research. You also need to research, right? What are the trends? As I was coming from the sugar industry, I also saw that people are no longer interested in eating a lot of sugar. You see? People now are leaving the sugar side. And then um, I then started, in, then I then got to know that, you know, health and lifestyle is becoming a big thing now, right? So before pre-launch, I did my research. And I also went in to check what is the product that is not available on shelf, right? Because I'm not a me too person. I wanted to come up with something unique. So I did my research and I actually then realized, no, this product is only done by bigger brands. You know, your Kellogg's, your Nestle and things like that. And I said, no, let me be 
the uh, David uh, on, the, on the scene of Goliath. And it worked for me. I challenged the status quo. And we have another question from your left as well. Thank you so much um, for such an uh, inspiring talk and presentation. And uh, I really feel it was um, by divine appointment that I'm here because I actually came today and this is speaking directly into my life. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm in the same situation. I'll get to my question. I just want to give a, a brief background where I, God has been speaking to me to also move into my own path in business and also I'm supposed to be serving God in ministry. However, I'm working for someone who is, um, for lack of a better term, a, a slave driver, but it's not matching the, the money, right? And uh, there was an incident where I felt like, okay, now I'm going to leave. Then also he called me back and said, no, we'll, we're going to negotiate, renegotiate your salary, and we're going to do this, um, you know, the whole uh, speech to get you back into his good graces. And unlike you, I felt guilty, and I, I, I fell back into the trap, and I went back. But now I feel like the word is coming again so strongly, the speech that you gave. So my question is, when it, you decided to leave your employer, I, I do imagine you had some level of loyalty to this person and relationship. How did you get over, number one, the guilt of maybe leaving him, uh, maybe hanging dry or something of, the, um, um, of that sort, and also fear of how am I going to fend for my family? Let's just say it, any business takes time to get on its feet. So how do you overcome that fear to actually say, okay, I'm going to business for myself, into business for myself? Okay. V very important question. The first mistake that you are doing is you are working for someone. You are not working for an organization. That's, that's the first problem that is there. When you work for someone, you get attached to that person. But when you work for an organization, there are deliverables and KPIs that you should achieve. So, let's stop working for people and start working for goals or objectives of the organization. If your energy is not meeting the goals of the organization, like what God said to Abraham, Simuka Ufambe. Stand up, up and, and go. Say, put up and go. That's what you need to do. So at the end of the day, we get connected to people. We get connected to their visions. And where there is misalignment, we get stuck. Right? So number one, we need to create principles, right? Principles around ourselves, to then say, if this is not achieved, or if this does not work this way, then I'm not... Like in our organization, we have got five value systems, right? The first value system is excellence. We hire and fire based on our five value system. Do you get it? So, as an individual, also create your own personal value systems. Things that you then say, I will stay when this and this and this is available. And I will move away when this and this and this is not available. We need to create personal value systems. I can tell you, no matter how big you are, you can't drag me to do certain things that I believe are not okay. Value system. And as you are going up, you know, in the field of money, there are bidders. Hmm? Somebody says, no, I'll give you 10 million. And somebody comes and says, I'll give you 12 million. What then matters to make a decision is your value system. So you need to start building it now because it will help you tomorrow. You can't live without a value system. Create your own value system 
when this, 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 this is not met, when there's no work-life balance, when there's this that is not met, I have to move away from this place. And then when it comes to fear, <laughs> if your fear is, if I move and it doesn't work, right? How about if you move and it works? Why, why, why are you focusing on it doesn't? Why don't you focus on the other side of the coin? If you move and it works, then who benefits? Yourself. So move. So, so it's, it's, very, it's very simple. Remember, you have to try. My, my new definition for strategy, strategy is a series of tried and failed efforts. Until you get what works, you need to try. You never know what works when you don't try. That's, that's as simple as, as it is. Try it. No, I think keeping broilers is profitable. Do it. You fail, you fail, you fail. And then if you see mm, the rate of failure is too much, let me. Or probably you get in and you are successful. But we always want to keep on the negative side of things. Keep on the negative side of things. And that fear. That's why God was so strategic in writing the Bible. 365 times in the Bible, fear not. Fear and You need that every day. He matched the number of fear nots with the number of days in a year because he actually needs you to remember that fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Every day. So fear not. Guys, guys, do you really understand this God? This God. Try him. Try him. And he's not a function of fear. He's a function of faith. So if we cling on the fear, there's another kingdom that we are enlarging, living our own kingdom of faith. Are you getting it? So let's cling on the faith and move. That little faith that we have, cling on it and build on it and you see what God will do.